Hey gang, we are at Charity Baptist Church Cemetery in Hazel Green, Alabama. We're just north of Huntsville, Alabama. And another story from Donald Netzel. Gotta love Donald, he comes up with the good one, so I've gotta credit him for this one too. This is about a woman back in the 50s that is associated with a meteorite that came into the atmosphere. Didn't quite break up. Her name, Anne Elizabeth Hodges. Very interesting story here, very famous story at the time, but a very tragic, I'm gonna say, you know, when I heard the story, it just made me really sad. The ending's really tragic for her. And you take somebody that is living out in the country and something happens that changes their lives, you think for the good, and in the end, it's just a curse. Anne Elizabeth Hodges was living not here. This didn't happen anywhere near here. It was Sylacauga, which is north central Alabama, the city of marble, the marble quarries. And little did anyone know what was going to happen on this this day, this day, it was November 30th, 1954. It was exactly 12.46 p.m. it was recorded. And there she is. She's 32 years old. She is taking her afternoon nap. Her husband's at work. And she is laying comfortably on her sofa with her afghan. And what are the chances? All of a sudden, out of nowhere, the ceiling explodes and down comes a black rock, almost as big as a football. I think it weighed eight and a half pounds. Hits, luckily it didn't hit her directly. It hits the, the big old radio next to her and then slams into her hip, just almost knocking her off the sofa. And what it turned out to be was a meteorite. Well, a fragment. There were three fragments that came down of the meteorite. And yeah, it hit her. Now, the next thing you know, she goes out. Everybody, a lot of people saw it coming down. They said when this meteorite hit or came into the atmosphere, you know, when meteorites come in, they just burn up. But this one got in low and they said it looked like a Roman candle splitting like an arc of a well just splitting apart. It was during the day a fireworks show. And they watched it like go down and practically saw it hit her house. So everyone went rushing over there and they're like, <laughs> she comes outside, she like, I got hit by this and it was still like hot in her hand. Holy cow, the news, the news stations, it just took off. I mean, you can just imagine, the mayor comes, the police chief comes. Everybody is descending upon her house. It is like an army of people coming from all over the state, all over the country in the end. It's just like here. <laughs> it's just like here. Here they come, the army.
well it, it, it just turned into a huge show it was a show and her husband comes home and his name's Eugene and he's like what is going on here he was dumbfounded. He's looking at the roof. He sees people all over. He sees shingles laying on the ground. And what's funny is everybody thought it was the Russians. The Russians were attacking. Well, they got the doctor over. I mean, she was in a lot of pain. She was reeling from this. Just imagine the size of a football practically, hitting you, glancing blow off the radio. So he said, you're going to be okay, but just to be safe, we, we're going to get you in the hospital. I mean, this was a little while later, maybe even a day or two later, but everything was going to be okay. Now, they didn't know at the time that it was a meteorite. They suspected, of course, but they wanted to check it out. So they sent it over to the U.S. Air Force, and the U.S. Air Force would give it a thorough analysis. Now, as the crowd grew and grew, Anne Elizabeth would give interviews, and she was starting to become locally famous. But then the question was, uh, where's the rock? Where is the rock? Air Force is not giving back my rock. And the next thing you know, the landlord's like, your rock, this is my rock. The landlord's name was some old lady named Bertie Guy. And she's like, that's my house and I got to fix it. So that means, so now you got this big fight going on. Bertie Guy hires a lawyer. And then Anne, Anne Elizabeth, they, they like, and her husband, they like counter sue. While all this is going on, the congressman said, the congressman got involved and, and told, like, I think the Air Force gave it to Smith, Smithsonian Institution. Like, you got to give that back to her. And the public was on her side. Everybody's like, come on. So they gave it back to her. They settled with Bertie Guy. And they're like sitting there waiting for these amazing offers to come in. Smithsonian gave them a pretty good offer. Now, meanwhile, the guy that lives down the street, he got a fragment, the old timer. They had no money. And he took the first offer. And that was enough to buy a new house and a new car. I don't know how much it was, but pretty good. But Ann Elizabeth was holding out. They decided they were just gonna like get rich off this. And I have to say they were kind of getting greedy. So they, they did get an offer from the Smithsonian Institution, but they said, this is an insult. We, we're gonna wait for this better offer. Well, guess what? A, 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 not only no better offer, but there was no offers coming. So they really messed up. She did end up, while all this was happening, and again, this was the hot thing in the news. You know, when something's hot, it's hot. She ended up on the game show we all like, I've Got a Secret, and he, like, he, the host, uh, Gary Moore, right? Yeah. And they guessed right away. They, she was so famous that the woman on the panel, I forget her name, she guessed right away. She's like, oh, you're Hodges. But they gave her the money. But yeah, Gary Moore's like holding up the rock. Like, and he went out, he said on TV, on the show, he said, your landlord, and da, da, da. And he got down on the landlord. And he's like, this is your rock. And the crowd's cheering. So she just like overweighted. She should have taken what she could have gotten. They should have, but they didn't. They did not take it, and then they just got no more offers. And she, 
Aunt Elizabeth, she would end up donating it to the Alabama Museum of Natural History. I believe that's where it is today. And then she thought it was a bad omen. She, she, she went into depression and who knows if it was just from that. She broke up with her husband. I believe they did divorce. I don't know if they divorced or not, but the limelight had faded away. And she ended up having a nervous breakdown in 1964. A nervous breakdown. And I believe it was after that, that was the final straw for Eugene. So he, he left her. And after that, her life just went downhill. Very sad. I mean, it just went down the drain, physically, mentally, and would end up in a nursing home. And sadly, in 1972, she succumbed to kidney failure. I mean, she may have been drinking, who knows, or maybe it was just something that happened, but in the end, in the end, Anne was all alone, just like her grave. I found that little yellow partial tulip. I put it there just so I could find it. See her grave amongst this. Everyone is here, flowers everywhere. And look at Anne is completely forgotten. Forgotten in life, towards the end of her life, and forgotten, forgotten in death. Very sad, it's just heartbreaking story, I think. And I think it's, it's a lesson. I did bring Anna flower, as we do. Well, well February 2nd, 1920. September 10th, 1972. Not much of a stone. Pretty basic, huh? I don't know, I think the lesson is, and you've seen it before with super successful people, when they're out of the limelight, they can't handle it. You see that in Hollywood, you see that in sports. Some, I'm not saying all, and they just go down the tubes. And you mentally go down the tube, your health goes down the tubes, and you die. Sometimes they take their own life, sometimes it's these, these physical causes. But it's so sad because Anne is just forgotten. She, I think she was only 52, right? Yeah. That is really young, guys, 52. And the picture of her holding the rock, she, she looks beautiful and a beautiful smile. Yet, I have to say at 52, she looks a lot, in my opinion, older for her age. And maybe it was the, the 70s. Maybe that's part of it, I don't know, but 52, so sad. Well, we're here to remember you, Anne, and may others come and visit you.